village to village and give them to the people who are interested and who come to the Lord and be baptized. Most of them are secret believers. They all take the Bibles. They all read the Bible. Back in India, as we do ministry, we have been facing a lot of persecutions. It's not easy. Gospel is easy, but taking the gospel is expensive. Preaching the word of God is easy, but taking the word to the people is expensive. Yet, God is faithful to do that. We are able to raise a lot of Bibles. As you know, Brother Tim and Susan are here. They are been a great support in getting the Bibles to us. As well as the church here has been so faithful to pray for us and the Pastor Billy and Pastor John have been giving us the Bibles also to take back home to give to the people who can know the word of God. We've been doing the ministry. It's been very hard spreading the gospel in the villages. So far, we were able to reach 3,000 villages by December, probably we will be finishing 3,100. So there's just a very big target ahead of us. Soon after I go back to India, we've been going to the villages on and off and on and off and giving away the tracts, preaching the gospel. Many of them come for healing when they're sick. Many demon-possessed people we face in our ministry. God is doing wonders. People are getting saved. People are being healed. People are coming to the church, but yet we have a problem. I want you all to pray. They are not able to come in front of the church to tell, God has healed me. Because of their caste problem, because of their background of being Hindus, <coughs> and also we were able to preach the gospel to 17 Muslim people who accepted the Lord. It's really a touch. But you can just look into my Facebook account. So many of them are there. Have added me. I don't post them because they're not exposed to the church, to their families, but they all have accepted Lord Jesus Christ in their hearts. One step at a time, we are able to move and shake the places that we were able to go. And Hindu, as we are in the India and Hindu land, people don't really accept Jesus because the very moment we carry the Bible, they say, you are getting a foreign God into our village. We don't want you to bring the foreign God. They always believe Jesus comes from America. That is what their concept is all about. <laughs> because that's how all the pastors have been proclaiming the gospel. We get funds from US and we preach the gospel. That's what the pastors have been doing. The very second we take the Bible and we go, we don't want your English God. We don't want your American God. So we are facing really troubles there. Our God is a God for everybody. He's yes. God for all the broken souls. Yes. He's a God who can call you and me yes. into his place. Yes. He's given the authority to be a priesthood of believers. He's given an opportunity for us to become his children. So so as we go and preach the gospel. Recently we have been facing, we faced a problem with the village. Our Bibles have been burnt off. And our vehicle has been thrown stones. The glasses were been broken down. At one point, I could I could really realize how God is so faithful to us. After my sermon got over, I moved out to go to the washroom. <laughs> and it's a village area. We don't have any washrooms. You need to go to the wood sites. So I had to walk a long way to go to the washroom there. By the time I came back, we could see the team of mine were been beaten up. And one, one brother neck was torn into pieces. It was bleeding. And they were kept, they were holding his neck. 
and they were waiting for the preacher who preached very strongly. I was very hard to tell them, you are sinners, turn, repent, come to the Lord. This is the time. And they were just waiting for me. And they didn't know who I was. I was just standing next to them. And my team members never told he is the one who preached. I was only saved. But just God escaped me out of that. And these are the, there are most many, many things that I can just count. How the ministry has been going on. It's really hard to preach the gospel. But that's the best job. That's the best anointing. That's the best call of God. To go share the word of God. Yeah. We are doing back in India. And the coming days, like it's going to be a December, November and December. December is a time where we invite all the old people, like we do in the church, the food ministry. That's the time we do uh, giving away clothes, giving away food, and trying to bring many to give away the Bibles. That's the best thing that we are doing. So far, so good. We were able to reach hundreds of people who have been blessed by the Bibles. Recently, one of the uh, members of the parliament, his sons, three sons, accepted the Lord within themselves. They are strong Hindu, but they voluntarily asked, we want Bibles. Before I could come to the U.S., I gave them the Bibles, three Bibles, and asked the question, you are all Hindu people who rule the nation now. Right now, you are, the, you are in the power, and you have all holds on the city or the town that I am in. So how do you receive the Bible? Then they said, we all studied in mission schools. See? All the mission work, all the mission hospitals, all the mission missionary things, everything comes from US and other parts of the world. And majorly, you see, the major part of the funding is being supported by the United States of America and the churches in the United States and the families of the United States and the believers of God are giving away they are stretching forth their hands and the, the work of the Lord is being done and it's just going on in India today. And recently we started, not only we going into the villages, we started training the Sunday school and the youth to preach the gospel in the streets. That's the first step we have taken. It's really hard to protect the kids as they go preach and give the tracts. But yet God is faithful and people are also so kind enough to receive the tracts from them. We don't mind whether they read it or they throw it, but they are able to receive it. And the one fine day we believe, when you sow the seed, you will reap the fruit. And the small little kids, when they take the tracts, they're happy to see them smile and they take the tracts. And we are blessed by giving those tracts to them. And New Testaments have been given away. Gideon Ministries have been working so hard in India, yet, Even many places, many big, big places, the Bible is being banned. They don't allow Bibles to be kept in the hotels. They don't allow Bibles to be kept in the restaurants <coughs> and in the, the rooms of the restrooms of the big, big hotels. You find always a Bible there in the hotel rooms. But nowadays, you don't find them because they are banned completely. Gideon ministry is coming down slowly. It's just cutting down because India doesn't want the word of God to be preached. But they are enjoying all the mission benefits from India, I mean from US, but yet they don't want the Lord. Today, my friends, as Pastor Dog was telling, we are thankful for each one of you that have supported us, been supporting us. And every month, when I really need financial support to my family, when I pray, I don't know from where the Lord speaks to this small man who does the bigger things for me. I always call him small man because he needs to go on. He needs to go on. We need him. We need him because India needs him. And whenever I am in trouble, whenever I am in need, and my family is in need, I hear a call from Susan Joy. Here! Your dear Pastor Billy comes on the way. 
he blesses you, Pastor Joshua. And really that encourages me. And I just thank the Lord for what he's doing. I have no words to express, but just say thanks and thank the Lord. Because he was a man who stood beside me. Even when I was broken, his family has been praying for me. The church was praying. Thank you, one and all. For this. And as I continue to be in the ministry, please do pray for me and my wife and my daughter and my father and mother. When I came here, I was preaching the gospel and moving around different churches to preach. Tell what God is doing in India. My daddy was sick and I was broken. I didn't know what's going to happen there. I was I was in double minded whether I have to stay back or go back to India. It was like the situation was tough within myself. The battle was so hard, but yet God was faithful because God knows I'm doing his work so that he will do my work. So today the same message I would like to give it to you. When you know the Lord, the Lord knows you. He knows you better than anybody. So let us get into the scriptures. Turn our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 47. And I want you to just open the Bible there from verse 1 to 12. All these verses just remind me how God works in everybody's life. We all go to a restaurant. The waiters come and ask you, what do you want to drink? The first thing we remember, we ask for iced tea, lemon tea. There are very few like me ask for water without ice. Your Bible is speaking about the water. We will read verses from 1 to 12. Putting these verses together, I have a lot of, like four outlines given to this scripture. As I was reading, going on, keep on reading, reading. I was just keep on writing. It's not finishing. It's just going on. It's going on. It's going on. But the Lord wants to speak to each one of us. It, in this passage, I would like to give you the best that I can give you. You can know how the Lord is working. Ezekiel 47, he has a parable to tell to the church. He has a parable about the coming millennium of God's reign. He has a parable for the church and Christian believers that they can stand for God in the days that they live. The Bible is explaining us four different kinds of Biblical principles from the scriptures. First thing, in its purpose we see, in its cause, there the Bible is telling us the water or the rivers that flow from heaven in the, from the throne of God, it reaches to the people. That is the source that we see in this verse. The sources is from God. It is not from the human beings. Every individual understand. We get the source from the individual person, individual church, individual family. But the sources is from God. Amen. He gives, he supplies, he provides, he takes care of you and me. Yeah. The sources is in the Lord. On, from the throne of God, the grace of God, the grace of throne gives blessings of rivers. It is not a small thing. It is it is just a flowing river. Right. Amen. It flows. It never dries. It just keeps on coming. It keeps on coming. So that we can never be thirsty. That's the blessings of God. You can read in verse 1, 2, and verse 6 to 12. We read these verses. You can understand how the river of God is flowing from the throne of God. And it, it indicates, the water indicates... Holy Spirit. Water indicates the Holy Spirit. When you read book of Genesis chapter 1 onwards, you see that the Spirit of the Lord was floating on the waters. One third of the earth is filled with water. And here we do ministry in India for waters. One third of the earth is filled with water. But you don't have a water to drink. Today, the water is helping. 
amigos to understand I'll be thirsty, I'll be filled with water. It is the source from God. And secondly, we see it is the cause from God. It is not just the sources from God, but it is the cause. God gives you a cause which is from the altar of God. This is the course where the preacher stands and gives you the word. You don't just sit here and sleep and talk and just do whatever you want. But from here, when the course of God is being delivered, receive it. Yes. Take it. Yes. Apply it. And then you see how the blessings will work in each one of our lives. Amen. That is the course of God. The course of God is giving away His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the course of God. He don't want you to be just empty but He wants to fill you by giving His only Son. And the Son who came to this earth, He said, I am the living water. When you trust in Him, when you drink Him, you drink Him that you can live in Him. That is the course of God. The course of God will double you. Because he wants you to have the double blessings of heaven. Yeah. The cause of God is that when you are broken, is that when you are alone, is that when you are left behind, there comes the cause of God yeah. to pull you back. Yeah. It will help you back. It will renew your spirit. It will transform from one end to another end. That is the cause of God. It comes from the altar of God, my friends. Yeah. The water flows from the altar of God. The man of God who stands here, he doesn't stand by himself. It is the altar of God who brings the sources, who brings the cause of God when you dig in the scriptures. We see here the third one. It is in the force. It is not simply giving away. It is given by force. Come on, drink it. Come on, take it. Come on, apply it. Come on, rectify it. Come on, get transformed. It is by force. Because the water doesn't just flow like that. When you open the tap and you try to flesh out something, you see how forcefully it goes. The word of God flows forcefully. You have to be strong enough to stand and withstand the force of God when you are filled by the Holy Spirit. You are being forced to know how it takes you from one place to another place. It is a force of transformation. That's what the Bible tells us here. The water explains us about the Holy Spirit. You and I are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You and I are receiving the Holy Spirit. You and I are applying the Holy Spirit. It is the force of God that comes to you. It is the wind of God that touches you. It is the ice of God that makes you cool in your life. It is the fire of God that penetrates you to know the word of God. When the water comes and pours, you got to be aware to stand face to force, my friends. It is the word of God. That's what the water is explaining here. He tells us that the water is purified. The water is perfect. The water is able to you can you are able to receive it you are able to drink it just like that because it is already given to each one of us let the water of joy flow from inside says the scriptures not from your lips oh so good and when they turn back oh, no we don't want those waters we want the waters of joy Amen. The waters of joy that bring many dying souls to the Lord. Yes. It is given by force. I challenge you today. I challenge you today. He tells us, bring every broken soul because he has the authority. He has the power. Book of Mark chapter 11, verse 28. Luke 4, 18 tells us that the people were asking, with what authority? Did Jesus heal them? In what authority was he able to give them food, touch them, heal them, bring them? It is the authority given by our only God. Because he himself is the authority. Amen. He himself is the sources. He himself is the cause. He himself is the force for you and me to know more about God. We miss the mark sometimes because we are into so 
many things. We are into so many things. We miss an edge of blessings, my friend. Don't miss an edge of blessings from God. God is good. And He's good all the time. He never leaves you. Never forsakes you. He's the one who can comfort you. The one that giveth comfort is a temporary. But he that giveth no comfort is for permanent. It is everlasting. Yes. He gives it to you. But let us take the scriptures. What the Bible is exactly telling about the waters. I would like to give you four different points. So that you can just keep them in your mind. What does the water exactly do to us? What can we learn out of these waters? Let us see. Verses from 7. I would like to just flip the verses from first to last and last to first. Just go here and there so that you can understand the passage properly and understand it. How really the prophet of God sees through his spiritual eyes so that we can see through the spiritual eyes. Yeah. The seventh verse is 7 we see. 47, 7 there the Bible tells us the river sustains life. You have life when you drink water. Amen. Amen. The church is there with me? Yes. yes. You there? Yes. When you drink the water, you have life. Now the Paul is showing an example by drinking it. See? You drink the water, you are alive. You become life. The Bible is telling us in seven words that now when I return, behold, the banks of the rivers. Where every many trees on the one side and on the other side, every tree that liveth with the help of water, Amen. it has life. Yes. The tree lives by the waters. Yes. Psalm 1 explains us the same water. If you are beside the bank of the river, you are going to grow. Yes. If you are away from the waters, you are aware from the banks of rivers, or oh, never be close to that, you are lost. That's what it explains us. I would like to just put it again. The water represents Holy Spirit. Underlining your mind, register it in your heart. Holy Spirit, if you miss the mark of the Holy Spirit, you have no life. The Holy Spirit tells you, this is Jesus. The Holy Spirit will tell you this is wrong. The Holy yeah. Spirit will tell you you have life only in him. Yeah. When you have Holy Spirit, he directs you back to Jesus. He directs you back to know the heavenly blessings. That's what it says. You will be sustained by the life. Yeah. If you don't have that water, let me tell you, my friends, you are dying. Yeah. You are dying when you don't have the Spirit of the God. You're dying when you don't have the experience of anointing of Holy Spirit. You are dying it. You're dying. You're dying. You're dying because you don't experience it. Today, God wants to give you, call you back to the His house of God to tell you this is the bank of rivers that you and me have in life. Come back to the light. Come back. How can you come to the light? By coming into His presence. By knowing God, Holy Spirit tells us, He fills us, He anoints us, He breaks through every chain that you're going in. When you have the life, my friends, that's what Bible is telling. He's explaining us, the trees are growing, the trees are flourishing, the trees are yielding fruits. How is that possible? Because the tree is besides the banks of the river. If you are not flourishing, if you're not bearing fruit, you are dying because you are not in the presence of God with the Holy Spirit of water. The Gospel of John chapter 15 tells us that. Without me, you cannot be nothing. In me, you can bear much fruit. Let us have the Lord. Let us drink the water of the scriptures. Let us drink the water of the truth, my friends. Bible is telling, there you have life. What kind of life you have? When you get into verse 12, chapter
chapter 47, 12. There it says, and by the rivers upon the banks thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat. The trees produce food. That's what I was telling you. You have big, big trees for good for nothing. You have grown 70 years, 90 years, 80 years. You just claim to be Christians. But there is no fruit in you. There is no growth in you. Why? Because you have not experienced the water of truth. Amen. It's not good to grow like this. He wants you to grow within. Amen. He wants you to grow within. He that produces fruit is able to eat, says the Bible. The tree is there to give meat, says the Bible. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Word of God becomes bread. The Word of God becomes milk. The Word of God becomes meat. The Word of God becomes life. Yeah. The Word of God becomes abundant blessings. Yeah. The Word of God turns to be a living water. The Word of God gives you joy. Yeah. The Word of God gives you comfort. Yeah. If you are besides the banks of the rivers, my friend, you will grow. You will bear much more fruits. I want to be besides the river. I don't want to be somewhere else where in the desert where there is no water. I don't want to be left behind. I want to be within the waters where I can be growing more. Amen. I want to grow. If you want to grow today, come to his presence. Yes. You want to grow today, come to his place and receive the water that he's giving you. The water that you will never thirst again. He speaks to the Samaritan woman. You are drawing water. But again you will be thirsty. But you know me. And you know me within myself. And you will ask me the water. I give it to you. You thirst never. That water we want right now my friends. That's what the Bible is telling us. He produces full. As Pastor Billy was telling all the broken hearts needs to be here so that God could heal you. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Psalm 34 verse 1 to 3. Jeremiah 33 1 to 3. Book of James chapter 5 16, 15 16. All these verses tell us by faith you are healed. By faith you can do wonders. But here the Bible is telling differently. He's not applying faith here. He's giving us something else in the inside. Let us see verse 12. It explains us that here when we read this fruit is also giving us medicine. This fruit is turning to be a medicine for us. The water is a medicine to us because the broken hearts are being built. The broken hearts are being again given a Good medicine that we can be strengthened by the word of God. The word of God is a medicine to me. The word of God is medicine to you. In your brokenness, in your sickness, in your loneliness, in your future, in all what is happening. The medicine helps you. It produces, sustains, sustains and helps us to have life. An abundant life the water gives us. Second, let me see. The river supplies life. Verse 8 tells us that. He supplies life. How do I get supply? Who is going to supply my needs? Bethel Family Center has a food center. When I go there, the food center will supply my needs. You have a hope, my But here when you come to the Lord, where is my hope? Who is my hope? From where will I get my hope? Who will supply my life? Even when you are in the desert. Even when you are broken. Even when you are all alone. Sometimes many of them I have heard people telling, I sleep brother, but I don't get 
to sleep. I have bought a good mattress, paid some hundreds of dollars, but I don't sleep, I don't get sleep. Why? What is wrong with you? You don't get sleep because your life is in desert. Your life is wandering. Your life is broken. But here the word of God tells you. He seen a vision. The water is flowing into the desert. Amen. Amen. Even if you are broken. Even if you are left alone. Even nobody cares for you. He is the one who is caring for you. He is the one who is supplying every need of yours. Amen. My friends, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged by one another. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Bible tells us that. Let these words encourage you, one another, because he supplies life. Isaiah 35, verse 1, we see that. Down into the deserts, the waters of river flows. Can you dig a borewell in desert? Interested grace. We are all funding for borewells. Can anybody invest their money to dig a borewell in desert? I would like to invest it. I know where is the water. The water is none other than the Holy Spirit. Even if you are in the desert, you will sing like anything. The water will just crush out because the word of God will touch every people who are Broken in the desert. Amen. Where you don't have hope. There he gives you hope. Oasis we find in deserts. Somewhere when you search. There are oasis. Little water where you get it. But the abundant flowing water. Is supplied in the Lord. Amen. When you trust the Lord. When you come closer to God. The third river we see here. In this passage. In verse 8. Second one we see there, it tells us that river sends life. How many of you are sending out? You know, do you know the meaning of church? The meaning of the church? The word ecclesia, which means in English, call out. We need to send out. We need to go out as the Spirit of the Lord leads us to go out and minister to the dry land. To minister the people who have no water of their life. The Spirit is dry. God wants you to fill them. When you are filled with anointing, you go touch somebody. They get that anointing. Amen. Have you ever experienced it? I have done it. I have done. The first time, my hands were burning like anything. From I was kneeling down straight to the Lord, and I was praying. I could see the burn from my foot started coming up, and it was so much. The, the flame was so much I could not bear. The opposite to me, there was a pastor kneeling down praying. I just wanted to release the fire on me. I just went and laid my hands on him. He just jumped to that door. And the fire left me. <laughs> Give away the fire that God gives you. Don't hold it back. Send it away so that they can be fire for God. That they can make the world upside down. That is what happened in the day of Pentecost. They went out to preach the gospel when they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing could stop them. No death could stop them. They started preaching the word of God. They went into the whole nation. Wherever the spirit led them. Today where the spirit is leading you. Where is your spirit leading you? If your spirit is leading to burning hell fire. Take a U-turn my friends. If your spirit is leading you to a destruction of the world. Take a U-turn and ask somebody to send you out so that you can have it. a life which God gives you abundantly. That's what I wanted. That's what it says. When you send out, the waters shall
shall be a healing medicine to you. The waters will be a healing medicine. When you have cold cup, I always tell my friends, drink hot water. When you have cold, when you have throat sore, don't drink cold water with ice. Drink hot water. Oh, Joshua, we don't drink hot water here. Yeah? I know. But when you drink hot water, you are healed. Because that is the medicine you see. I'm talking medically. When you drink hot water, your intestines will be good. Abbas? All our intestines will be good. And you'll be free. No constipations. Drink hot water. Take away the constipation of sin. Take away the constipation of destruction. Take the hot water of the Spirit of God. Send it inside you so that you can be free. I want to be free. I don't want to be stuck in somewhere. I don't want any concretes to be in me. I want a free life. I want God to fill me. Let the Lord fill us with His Spirit where He can send you out, preach the gospel to the dying world. That is what the Bible is telling us. Fourth one we see, the river of support. You should be a supportive river. You should be a supporting river for others. When your husband is broken, wife needs to go as a support. When wife is broken, husband needs to be a support. When children are broken, parents are to be a support. When you are individually broken, the church should be a support. That's what the early churches were. They were praying when Peter was in a prison. Yet they were praying, praying. There comes a knock. Even they have not finished the prayer. Peter is standing at the door. That was the church prayer. Yeah. Support in prayer. Support in finances. Support in time. Support yourself, says the word of God. Whatever God has given you talent. I see sister could not walk. But that was not a weakness. Physical weakness. But nothing could stop her singing. Maybe her body doesn't permit to move here and there. But nobody can stop her mouth. Nobody can zip her lip. She is always praising God. Why is that? How is that? Who is stopping her? Man. The joy of her heart is bubbling out. I am loved by God. I don't care about anybody on the earth. I am loved by God, I care by God, supported by God. He supports you when you're broken. He supports you when you fall down. He supports you when nobody is there. He goes with you. He goes with you when he goes with you. Are you ready to go with him? That is a point. He's ready to come along with you. But are you ready to stand with the Lord? Bible is telling you. In verse 9, you see, everything shall live and the rivers come up. Everything liveth. Everything, everything, every possible. Rivers shall come, shall live, and there shall be a great multitude of fishes. The rivers support you by supplying. God wants you to. We are supply to the church. God bless you. Lord. God wants you to be a blessing to the church. As they were, as Sister was telling, we are expecting a bass guitar. We are expecting a drummer. Don't expect you have received it. Claim it that you have received it. Book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Today God is giving you faith is that something which you don't See, but you believe, and that is called faith. You have the people to worship God. The yeah. Bible is telling you are called to be a supporting to the church. Whatever the Lord supports you, whatever the Lord helps you, you got to be a supporting to the church. 
if you're not being a supporter to the church, then it is waste of being in the church. I would like to compare the rivers to church and to Christianity. The comparison between the church, the levels of water, as you read in the scriptures, is compared to four different levels. Today I would like to encourage you, if you are discouraged, if you are hurt, please, please, which means God is speaking to you. If you are hurt, I am blessed. If you are hurt, I am blessed. Because the scripture is speaking to each one of us. The levels of our faith, the levels of our spiritual standard. Let us see where is our level today. Four places we see in this passage the levels of Christian faith. Four levels of Christian faith. The rivers of water is basically meant for fishes. The rivers of water is basically meant for the trees that grow besides the banks of river. The rivers are basically meant for the animals. But here we see the rivers are designed all spiritual levels. Number one, first level, verse three, we see the waters were to the ankles. There are Christian believers who don't study the Bible. There are people who just walk into church. When they eat, they don't pray. When they sleep, they don't pray. When they go to work, they don't pray. When they are at home, they don't read. And when you ask somebody, what was today's devotion? They become deaf. They don't know what preacher is talking about. They don't understand. They pretend. They have not heard before. But today God is asking you, what is your spiritual standard? We usually have in India, calendars and each calendar there will be a date like 1 to 31 the dates will be there and besides the date they print a scripture verse there are people who read the calendar and they go when they sit to eat they eat three men for little bit just the calendar size but when they want to eat for their stomach, they eat three men's food. <laughs> now what is your spirit eating? Your physical body is strengthened by the food that you eat. You stuff your stomach where you cannot even breathe. But when you read the scriptures, you read it from the wall and the calendar scripture, one word, and they all have read the scripture, brother, you know that? Oh. But what it says? Oh, it says, blah, 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 blah. And what it says to your spirit has nothing to do with the spiritual life. Today, God is warning you. The water level of yours is just below your ankle levels. Are you a Christian who say, I read calendar, and fill my stomach? Are you a Christian who say that somebody has given a commentary I read the commentary and say, oh, I am so blessed. We don't see any blessings. Only through your mouth we see the blessings. But nothing in action. Nothing comes to life because the scriptures doesn't fit in your tongue. The rivers of water which flows from above as it goes, the first level of Christians is the ankle level, says the word of God. The prophet, he understands the waters were to be up to ankle. Church, if you don't grow, church, if you don't grow, you don't see this. If I don't grow spiritually, I don't carry blessings to my home. If I don't grow spiritually, I don't carry blessings to my church. If I don't grow spiritually, I don't carry blessings to the broken hearts. If 
I don't grow spiritually, the work that I do on this earth is in vain. That's the reason the Bible is telling you. The prophet says about the saints of God, you must be saved. To touch your ankle level, you need to be saved. The first one, you must be saved. Salvation cleanses you. Salvation changes you. Salvation comforts you. Salvation converts you. When you are saved. A saved person's life is different from others. You can easily know this man or this woman or this boy or this young lady or the church of God. They belong to God. But seeing at their lifestyle, the spiritual standard here, Bible tells us that you must be saved. Number two, you must be sanctified. Verse four, the Bible tells us that sanctification comes when the water level reaches your knees. There's a there's a, a, a preacher who told, when you kneel before God, you will stand before men. If you don't know how to kneel before God, you cannot stand before man. When you, have, when you don't have a personal experience kneeling before God, you better learn it. When your knees are good, this is the right time. When you become 60s, 70s, oh, I cannot kneel down. My kneecap is gone. Where did it go? Who stole your kneecap? <laughs> Satan stole your kneecap? Are you wasted in your kneecap? When your knees are good and strong, kneel before the Lord. That's what the Bible tells. Every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow before God. Because He is the God of living. He liveth. Let us kneel. Don't give excuses. Oh, my, my pants are tight, sir. I cannot kneel down. I may tear into pieces. <laughs> kneel before God. He will take care of your pants. He will take care of situations. But you kneel before God. Your water levels of spirit should go up to your knees where you can bend every Satan principality of his world. Only by knees you can conquer faith. Only by knees you can grow spiritually. Only by knees you can be sanctified. So Bible is telling you, the water levels of the knee is to help you get washed completely. It sanctifies you. I want to go into my knees. I see so many people, they kneel on half. It doesn't go rich. That's one kind of a style. They don't want to kneel on completely. Why, why, brother, can't you put your both knees there? No, my pants will get dirty. Don't worry about your dirty pants. Kneel before the true living God. Moses took off his boots when the voice of the Lord he heard. There were people who took off everything, all their pleasures, and came before the throne of God because they knew the, the Savior, they knew. The living water flows from the throne of God so that I can be sanctified. He wants your knees. We you see here. Again, he measured thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. He measured to the knees. Spiritual life after you're saved, you're sanctified. And secondly, we see thirdly, you must be surrounded by. When you are in the water, the water is filled around you. When you stand, you stand in the spirit of the Lord. Do you get that spirit when you worship the Lord? Have you experienced the presence of God in the midst? I can feel the burning here. This is a place where God is standing. I experience when he, when the preacher speaks from here, he doesn't speak his words. He speaks our spirit. It is a fire of God. 
church, which is surrounded in this place. I have preached in many churches here in the U.S. I have never felt the spirit like this here. Amen. The moment I stand here, it is not me, but it is the Lord. I have preached in different churches, telling about the gospel, telling about India, telling about the truth of the word of God. Never felt the same anywhere. Here is a place where you can stand and see the presence of God. When your knees are full with the Spirit of God, you are surrounded by the Holy Ghost. You are surrounded fully with the Lord. You are anointed. You just stand and you just jump with joy. It doesn't happen in any places. It happens only in one place. The place where God stays. Where the place God speaks. Where the place God makes wonders. Today, my friend, I would like to encourage you. As the saints of God, let us serve the Lord. The fifth one. Fifth verse to read here. Bible is telling the water is just not the knees, but the water is full to swim and pass by. You can swim in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You can swim in the Spirit of the Lord. That's what the Bible is telling you. It just takes three different progressive swimming, which is you, the water level rises up. When you go down, the water level goes up. When you are more deeper in the Lord, you see many deeper things, unseen things, unexpected things in the presence of God. Look up Jeremiah 33, verse 3. B explains is that the things I do are wonders to your thoughts. You will never imagine how it does when you are deeper in the Lord. Secondly, we see you have plenty of water. That fills you when you are deeper, when you swim, the water is multiplied. The water is multiplied. The Spirit of the Lord is multiplied. That's the reason the church enjoys in the Spirit. Yeah. The church swings in the Spirit. The church is strengthened by the Spirit. The water levels goes higher and higher to make you comfortable. Yeah. Many people float in the water. They swim, they float. They're just floating. Third one is floating in the water any time, in season and out of season. You're filled with the spirit of God. The water sustains, surrenders, and serves you to go serve others. The man of God, the prophet of God, sees the vision, the parable of the millennium reign of Jesus. The people are to their ankles. People are to their knees. People are full to swim. And the waters are for the lion. And the lion comes from Judah. And Judah is none other than Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus, you have the Spirit of God. You have Jesus in you. The Spirit of the Lord will conform you to come closer to Him. To confess your weaknesses, to give away an abundant life. I want that life. If you want, let us check our lives. Let us close our eyes before the Lord.